team. On this channel, I like to do a lot of comparisons and torture testing for different products to figure out what's the most durable. Because for me, you know, I, I put my stuff through hell and I wanna make sure that it lasts a long time. But sometimes I have to admit when I'm out of my depth. Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski, and this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Let me start off with this. This right here is a Luminox. I can't remember the model, but I bought this a long time ago thinking that it would be the perfect field watch in my job as an electrician. But this thing right here ended up being a several hundred dollar mistake. I mean, the lens is all scratched up and then eventually it just stopped working. So it sat in a drawer and uh, I don't know why I still have this. Now my expertise pretty much ends at like boots, workwear, and types of cereal. That's, that's kind of it. But luckily I have some friends who are experts on watches like Ben from Ben's Watch Club. He put together a video for us about the most durable watches out there. A lot of brands which we've never heard of. So without further ado, let's get into Ben's video. Over the last six years of covering wristwatches, I've encountered a wide variety of pretty unique timepieces. Some fantastic and others, well, not so much. In the spirit of Carl's channel, here's a list of the most durable brands that I've come across. For those of you after a hardy watch that can take a licking and keep on ticking. At the end of the video, I'll also reveal some watches that seem to be good on paper that you should actually avoid at all costs. Now, some of the brands I'll be talking about you may have seen before, but arguably the best options are those from little known companies. So stay tuned. Where else to start but Casio? They've built up an astonishing fan base since the launch of their first digital watch back in 1974. Of course, when it comes to durability, their legendary G-Shock line is the first that comes to mind. Launched in 1983, this series utilizes a proprietary internal cushioning system, allowing the watches to survive extreme impacts by redirecting the force away from the internal module. You've probably seen these watches before, as they're somewhat of a fashion statement these days too. While there's a huge assortment of models to pick from, all of which boast huge water resistance, the DW5600 is the closest model to the original G-Shock, and it's got two key advantages over some other options. Firstly, I think it's one of the best looking options, and it's also more compact than some of the newer G-Shock designs, which can get enormous. Of course, even these watches are still pretty big. So while they are near indestructible, they're also best suited for larger arms, or at least those after a bigger watch. The DW5600 is very well priced considering its performance, but consider splashing out the extra for the near identical GW M5610, which packs in solar charging and can receive radio waves via multiband 6 to maintain perfect accuracy. I'll get Carl to link the watches in the description below because these code names, they're a bit of a mouthful. If you want to save a bit of money, the DW290 is a lower cost non G-Shock model that packs in many of the same functions. This one was worn by Tom Cruise in the first Mission Impossible movie, and while not designed for the same extremes as the record-breaking G-Shock watches, it's still overkill for any day-to-day -day task. I mean, just look at it. If those are both too chunky for your needs, Casio does make smaller watches, the most infamous of these being the F91W. A timepiece known for adorning the wrists of both heroes and villains is probably the most popular wristwatch of all time. Chances are your dad has probably worn one of these at some point. It's compact, robust, and very, very cheap. But in modern times, there's a better option, the W86. The W86 is much the same sort of thing, and it looks fairly similar on the surface. It's even similarly sized, but it's got enhanced water resistance, a tremendously improved nightlight, and a marginally better strap with ventilation holes. It's the best tiny digital watch at the time of recording at least, and it's usually not a great deal more expensive than the F91. Other notable Casio watches are their dive watches. As you can probably guess, dive watches are designed to withstand extreme water pressure, making them an inherently good choice for those after a watch that can punish. The most popular of these from Casio is the Duro. This piece, codenamed either MDV106 or MDV107, depending on which you purchase, is widely considered the best low-cost dive watch due to its impressive build quality and 200 meter water resistance rating. It's got a steel case, a fully ratcheting bezel, and a screw down crown to shield it from the elements. It also looks much more expensive than it is, which never hurts. The Duro is a little 
unwieldy for smaller arms, and it is more expensive outside the US, so it may also be worth watching for the comparably performing MTD 1053D. This diver matches the Duro in terms of construction and water resistance, and is smaller, all while costing a chunk less. The main downside with this model is the tinny feeling bezel and divisive visuals, which won't be to everyone's taste. But for something to submerge regularly on the cheap, it's hard to beat. A brand in a similar price bracket is Armitron. This American company has been around since 1975, and while many of their pieces are made in China, just like most Casios, some models have them beaten in terms of materials. That's definitely the case with the Rogue and Rubik, two of their digital models. While akin to some of the retro plastic Casios, these two are actually made of stainless steel, despite the competitive price tag. They've got good water resistance too, with the main pitfall being the stock bracelets, which suck almost as bad as those fitted to the silver Casios. So long as you factor in the cost of a third-party strap, these are excellent full metal choices that are far less likely to scratch. While digital's the go-to for modern military personnel, Old school field watches are still a reliable choice for those who prefer an analog experience. While I've reviewed dozens over the years, I keep returning to the same two Loris field watches. Loris is a subsidiary of Seiko, which makes Seiko powered watches for a lot less money. There are two incredible options here, both of which have horrendously long code names. The first is a wafer thin steel watch on a nylon band, which has an incredible Lumi Bright dial whose low light performance is unparalleled for the money. Alternatively, there's a fully titanium one, which drops the Lumi Bright in favor of improved looks and a beautifully light case that you'll forget is even on your wrist. Considering these are often purchasable for close to the same price as the plastic Casios, their 100 meter water resistance is even more astounding. Just don't forget to keep the crown compressed. They're just so difficult to beat, especially the titanium one. That's a material that you'll usually find in much more expensive watches. While the Loris watches are fairly good at dodging impacts due to their tiny proportions, American brand Batucci has a range of watches that are essentially designed to take a beating. These quirky looking field watches come in a variety of case materials and feature raised bezels to protect the edges of the glass, as well as completely solid bars in place of standard spring bars. Now this does limit you to pass through only straps, but it also removes a common point of failure, ensuring that your watch doesn't accidentally end up falling off and going through your lawnmower. Now they aren't the best spec watches for the money, but they're certainly among the most durable. Petucci watches come in multiple sizes and are readily available on sites like Amazon. Now we start to move into some of the cleverer, higher end stuff. First up is Core Essentials. Now you may have heard of this brand from their ratcheting belts, which many YouTubers have covered before, me included on my previous channel. Their ingenious system massively reduces the wear on your belt as it doesn't even require holes. I've had some of these for eight or nine years at this point and they still almost look new. But what does that have to do with watches then? Well, as you might've guessed, Core Essentials has made a watch as well as a watch strap. Now the watch isn't anything out of this world. In fact, there are currently two models. They're both blacked out Swiss quartz watches that I think are a little too expensive. That said, there are a couple of reasons I had to include them here. Firstly, they've both got a black PVD coating, which held up surprisingly well in my scratch test video. And secondly, they ship with micro adjustable bands that have a slide rail system, just like their belts. It's very secure and you can get the perfect fit very quickly. While it may not be a must purchase at the moment, they're certainly worth bearing in mind. Citizen. Citizen is a much larger Japanese company with a huge range of pieces to pick from. While their super titanium watches are a frequent recommendation in online forums, I'd be a bit cautious for reasons I'll mention later. The Promaster range is a far more consistent choice, or at least those with that label, with some fan favorite pieces like the NY0040, which has been on sale for over 30 years, thanks to its sturdy bezel and aquatic mastery. You can grab this one in a variety of colors, um, while it's powered by an automatic movement, others in the range offer the more reliable EcoDrive Solar Quartz instead. In fact, some Promaster variants go all in when it comes to functionality. With extreme pressure resistant construction, that means they can hold up to just about any scuba activity you can think of. Although some of them do get monstrously large. If you wanna feel like you've got a tough hunk of steel on your wrist, they may be the way to go. Singaporean micro brand RZE also targets maximum performance, but in a completely different guise. You see, like the Loris I mentioned earlier, their Resolute 2 is constructed of titanium. 
meaning it's incredibly lightweight. Only this time, it's been treated with their in-house Ultrahex coating to significantly improve its scratch resistance capabilities. Now, Ultrahex may sound like somewhat of a superhero name, but the performance improvement is very much real. In fact, it's shocking. In our recent watch case scratch test video, this was comfortably the best performer out of all the titanium-based watches we tested, with performance that surpassed many hardened steel watches. It completely trounced Citizen's Super Titanium and only finished behind a fully ceramic watch, tying with a far more expensive sin. Whatever they put in that coating, it works, and the great thing is, it doesn't spoil the look of the watch either. In fact, the Resolute 2 is way better looking than its predecessor, the Resolute 1, with a beautiful textured dial and a slim case that's extra sleek on the wrist. I'd highly recommend giving this little known micro brand a try. Another brand out there advancing the watchmaking game is Formex. I wanted to share this Swiss brand with you primarily because of the clever engineering used in their watches and straps since 1999. Some of their dress models use this weird suspension system that uses springs between the upper and lower parts of the case, allowing the bezel and crown to move freely up and down. The result is a more comfortable, flexible fit that's simultaneously more impact resistant. They're just about the only brand I know of that offers this sort of system. In a similar manner, the Formex Field Watch I reviewed had a special clasp that allowed fine tinkering to an even greater degree than the core strap I mentioned earlier. You don't even have to take the watch off to operate it, and this clasp will boost the longevity of your band, though it is quite expensive when purchased separately. I couldn't make this list of most durable watches without this one particular piece from Vario. They're a small, family-run brand based in Singapore, and they make what I can only describe as the most committed military watches I've encountered. While they do make some attractive Second World War themed watches, their First World War inspired 1918 trench is next level. It's got a tough button strap, an incredibly legible Art Deco dial, fixed lugs rather than spring bars, as well as all the top tier materials like steel and sapphire crystal. But let's be honest, many watches have a similar spec sheet, and some even have a comparable retro vibe, you've seen them before. Why is this one so special? Well, no other watch I've encountered is compatible with one of these. This optional extra is a World War One era shrapnel protector, which you can attach to the top of the 1918 trench to reinforce it even further. It certainly is quite the look, but if you love military history and want an added layer of protection, I can't think of a more apt recommendation. That and the watch underneath, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? I've got a question for you. What do you do if you can't find a watch that's good enough? No, it's, it's not a joke, you just make your own. And that was the logic behind the Erebus brand created by the YouTuber, Just One More Watch. He's another reviewer like me and was tired of the big brands delivering mediocre performance or while jacking up prices. Now, I didn't love the look of his first watch, the Origin. It's a very safe diver design that doesn't resonate much with me. That said, the one thing I can't deny is the build quality. Every aspect of the construction is top tier, from the well-made super adjustable bracelet to the highly legible dial and the perfectly precise bezel. It does punch well above its price in those departments. It also has the best luminescence I've seen on any watch with a blue glow that embarrasses all of the big brands. In the hands, it's among the most solid feeling watches I've tried, outclassing the likes of Seiko and Citizen at the same price. If you don't mind the visuals, it's definitely worth a punt. Now, some watches are definitely not worth a punt if you're after long-term performance. The first batch of watches to avoid are certain sub-$50 Chinese watches, including those from the brand Biden. Yes, this is a real watch brand. In fact, it's usually among the best sellers on Amazon, so lots of people are clearly buying them. You'll see the same designs as this produced under other brand names too, but in reality, they're all identical and made in the same factory. It's kind of like drop shipping if you're familiar with that. On the surface though, and despite the dodgy branding, these watches seem like a great deal, with high on-paper specifications that often match other watches at double or triple the price. And for people like you and me who care about performance, it can be pretty alluring. Unfortunately, the listed specifications can't be trusted and they don't tell the full story. The Biden watch I reviewed, for instance, claimed to be stainless steel, and the seller even said it used IP plating. However, the watch was actually constructed of an inferior alloy that scratched way more easily. The movement also sucked, and the whole thing felt incredibly crude. Generally, these super cheap watches are worth avoiding. 
Another poorly made watch brand is Fossil. Now, Fossil may be a respected leather brand, and their Swiss sub brand Zodiac is reportedly pretty decent. However, the mainline Fossil watches and those produced for their other subsidiaries are nothing short of junk these days. I've tried almost all of them, and they've repeatedly shocked me with how terrible they are for the money, with awful quality control, bare bones materials, lazy case finishing, and most surprisingly, awful quality leather straps, which you wouldn't expect from a leather company. Years ago, they may have been decent. Maybe, maybe you've got an old fossil watch that's actually quite good. But as I discovered in their recent annual reports and investor presentations, the fossil group has been aggressively cost-cutting their products for several years. So this harsh dip in quality is unsurprising. I can't speak to their smartwatches as I've never tried them. In a similar vein, most aggressively marketed fashion watch companies are to be avoided at all costs. If you see the phrases affordable luxury or cutting out the middleman, run for the hills, as the likelihood of getting a durable timepiece is about as likely as my chances of becoming a hair model. Examples of these that I've reviewed include Filippo Loretti, MVMT, Bellucci, Vincero, and Daniel Wellington. Fingers crossed that those brands improve in the future. Surprisingly though, it's not just these new upstart brands that you need to be careful with. Indeed, if you care about quality, it's worth exercising caution when shopping for both Casio and Citizen. While both make good watches overall, their product lineups both have some quirks that you should look out for. With Casio, you probably already know that many of their cheapest silver watches are made of plastic. What you probably didn't know is that a lot of their budget metal watches aren't actually using the industry standard stainless steel. Instead, they often use cheaper alloys and chrome-plated brass, which may look the same, but will corrode much more quickly. Just because it says Casio doesn't mean durability is a given. They also made a smaller version of the Duro I mentioned earlier, which you would think would be a sure bet. However, they butchered it with a quarter of the water resistance and massively reduced build quality. That was one of the worst watches I reviewed last year, and it's such a shame. Earlier, I also mentioned Citizen Super Titanium. The reason I bring it up here is that the product messaging around this special coating is incredibly vague and very misleading for consumers. On the Citizen website, it straight up says that Super Titanium is five times harder than stainless steel with no asterisk. Yet in our scratch test video, our Super Titanium branded Citizen performed worse than stainless steel and no better than an untreated titanium watch. Ironically, that cheap Loris I mentioned earlier. It turns out that there are basically different types of this super titanium with massively varying levels of scratch resistance between them. Apparently the highest end Duratec super titanium watches are awesome in this regard. Maybe they actually reach that claimed 5x figure. Nevertheless, Citizen doesn't easily differentiate these coatings on their website with them all just listed as super titanium and grouped into the same section. There are no easily accessible documents or straightforward ways of telling these apart from the online listings, which is, in my opinion, silly and manipulative. I hope you found this useful. I'd love to see some of you over at Ben's Watch Club. Thanks, Carl, for hosting me as well, and keep up the good work. Well, you heard him. Go over there. Go to Ben's Watch Club. Check him out. He's got some great videos over there, and I'm really, really uh, honored that he was able to make this video for us here. So thank you so much, Ben. And if you agree or disagree, I know a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions because it is YouTube after all. Please leave those in the comment section below. I love going back and forth with you guys down there. And oftentimes, I learn a lot myself. So please feel free to, you know, leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Which one was your mistake? I mean, my Luminox was mine. Which one was yours? Let me know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later.